You hear that? That's those beautiful sounds of summer. Birds chirping, waves crashing. There is nothing better than those sounds. And with that, I want to welcome everyone back to SGCN, the summer edition. Yeah, the summer's winding down, but it's not quite done yet, so enjoy the rest of it. But I am glad you have decided to stop in here with us today to go over some Gloucester Catholic news. I am once again your host, Rob Lange. We have a great, fun-filled show for you today. Today will be a, a day of lists, okay? We're going to do some top five lists of music, of movies, of books, of things to do if you have young kids, of what we miss about Gloucester Catholic and we cannot wait to get back to in September. On top of the li these lists, we'll have our good news. We will also go over a very special anniversary that is coming up. And then we will get an opportunity to see some names of the newest members of the GC family. So with that, let's get right into our first list. Summer reading, anyone? Well, we know you're required to read some books, but in case you're feeling a little adventurous, Miss Elena Silver has given us her top five reads of the summer, and here they are. Hi, everyone. I hope you're having a great summer. This is Mrs. Silver signing on to give you guys my top five summer reads. So I put together a list of the top five books I think you guys should read this summer. It's anywhere between eighth to twelfth grade reading level. So as we go through, I'll tell you kind of which reading level for which book. So I'm going to share my screen here so you guys can see. All right, so the top five summer reads. So number five, I think um, this is a great book that I read uh, earlier in the summer. It's called The Selection by Kira Cass. Now this is definitely like a ninth, 10th, 11th grade reading level. And this book is really um, Hunger Games meets The Bachelor. So if you like those kind of dystopian novels, this is for you. The short summary is there is uh, this dystopian United States where there's a caste system. So based on um, which caste you're born into, like if you're born into the fifth caste system, you're an artist. If you're born into the uh, eighth caste system, you're a servant. If you're born into the first caste system, you're a noble. And um, once in a while they have this selection on how they choose the prince's um, wife or the princess's husband. So it goes through, that's why it's kind of like the Hunger Games because they go one by one, meets The Bachelor. This is a really easy read, this book. So you could really finish it in a week or so. And the cool thing is, is if you like this book, it's a trilogy. So there's a couple more that you could read. So that's my number fifth selection. Number four is called The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman. This is a great book, kind of similar to like a Harry Potter read, um, action, adventure. There's a really strong female lead character. That's why I really like it. It's also a movie series with Lin-Manuel Miranda, who just wrote the Hamilton series, if you guys watch that on Disney. And again, if you like this, there's a bunch of other series, and it's a movie, so you can watch that. Definitely read the book before you watch the movie. So this is my number four choice, The Golden Compass. My number three choice is called The Five People You Meet in Heaven. I'm not sure you, if you guys have to read this for summer reading for religion class at all, but this is a really great book by Mitch Album. Um, and this is just a summer I pulled off the internet. It follows the life and death of a man named Eddie who is killed and sent to heaven where he encounters five people who had a significant impact upon him while he was alive. Um, so it's a little bit dark in the, in the beginning because the character is killed. It's really interesting story um, to hear this author's idea of what heaven looks like and the people that impact you in heaven. That's number three. My number two choice is called The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. This is an awesome book. I read this this summer and it was a complete page turner. Now, I do recommend this for more of the upperclassmen, junior, seniors. I, I believe it would be easier read for you guys. It's also a pretty hefty read. It's going to take some time. Um, the summary is a story of two sisters caught up in occupied France during the Second World War, and both have remarkable stories to tell. This is kind of um, a combination between like the diary of Anne Frank, if you like that story, combined with a strong sisterhood bond. Um, the sisters, these two sisters are the main characters. Again, I would recommend this for more of the junior seniors because this has some heavy topics in there. And the cool thing about this book is that it's a movie that's coming out with the Fanning sisters that are the two leads. Um, the movie was put on hold during like a lot of the recent times for development, but it is coming out and um, it's rumored to be that the Fanning sisters are the leads. 
And then number one, doo -doo -doo, my top choice this summer, the best one of the best books I read this summer, this age group is called The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. And this is written by Susan Collins. So those of you guys who've read The Hunger Games, this is the same author. Um, so if you like The Hunger Games, you're gonna love this book because it's centered around President Snow, who is a character in The Hunger Games, but it's back when he was um, younger, like 15, 16, 17 year old. And it's like one of the earlier Hunger Games that they're looking into. Now, the good thing is if you haven't read The Hunger Games, this is a prequel, so you can read this without having any idea of The Hunger Games, because it's not the same story, it's just one of the same characters. And um, it's adventure, action, thrill, chill. There's a little love story in there too. And um, I haven't heard anything yet, but I probably guarantee that this is gonna be turned into a movie because this is an awesome book. It's definitely a page turner. Um, and this just came out, so it might be a little bit pricey, but this is definitely my number one recommendation. So I hope this helped you guys, and I hope you're also doing your summer reading because that's important, but these are just top five really fun page-turning summer reads to keep you guys reading this summer. And I can't wait to see you guys back in the classroom in the fall. See ya. Thank you, Mrs. Silver. I know I got to check out that prequel to The Hunger Games as that was one of the best series. But on a more important note, kids, you got a couple weeks left. Get the summer reading done. All right, let's move on to our good news right now. We're going to start with Rising Junior Sarah Reed. Sarah was accepted into the Johns Hopkins University Medical School Intensive Summer Program. The two-week program is designed to engage the brightest of, school, of high school students who are interested in studying medicine in the future. Sarah said, the experience was so informative and I learned so much throughout the two weeks. The information I learned throughout the program further encouraged my interest in the medical field, and this experience really has encouraged me to pursue a career in medicine in the future. I am so grateful for my guidance counselors and teachers at GC for aiding me in the application process. Without them and their help and encouragement, I would have never been able to take part in this amazing program. Well done, Sarah. We all expect great things from you in the future. For our alumni news, we move on to Christina Ryder from the class of 2011. Christina is a physical therapist at Christiana Hospital, and early on during the COVID crisis, she volunteered to work on the COVID floor, providing PT to the very sick and infected patients. Unfortunately, she became very sick herself and tested positive for COVID-19. She was treated for her symptoms and self-isolated for two weeks and regained her health and strength. The day after being cleared, Christina returned to work. Her selflessness on the front lines, her inner strength, and her positive attitude is who she is and what she learned at Gloucester Catholic. And Christina, your entire Gloucester Catholic family is so proud of you and thanks you for your service. The last story in our good news segment this week is one of gratitude. For 39 years, Mrs. Anheim has been a staple on the faculty here at GC. After all those years of molding young rams in a teaching career that spans decades and generations of GC families, Mrs. Heim has decided to retire from teaching. We just wanted to take a moment here at SGC and from everyone at Gloucester Catholic to thank you, Mrs. Heim, for all of your hard work and dedication to each and every student that came into your classroom. Your service to the Gloucester Catholic family has been a model for everyone associated with this school, and you are going to be truly, truly missed. As we always say, once a ram, always a ram. Now with that, it's time to get back into those lists. And listen to me, you wanna talk about dedication to a job. No one has more of it than Mr. Ryan Murphy. And when I asked Mr. Murphy to take part in this, it kept him up at night. But there was no way I was going any other way than the eclectic ear of Mr. Murphy to give us a top songs of summer playlist. I asked for five. You check out what he gave me. All right, so Landy asked me to make you guys the top five songs of summer playlist. Uh, little did he know how much I enjoy music and making playlists and how much anxiety I have over it. So I've been fretting about this thing for the past two weeks. So I didn't know, what do you want? You want the top five songs with summer in the title? No, that's not what you want. That would be the easy way. I could have went the cute way, giving you my two-year-old son's favorite songs of summer of 2020. But that's cheating too. This is some good news, not some average news. We're going to the big board, come on. Ultimate guide to a summer playlist. Number one, my opinion, best summer song because it doesn't try to be a summer song. 
Tom Petty running down a dream. It was a beautiful day. The sun beat down. We had the radio on. I was a driving. Are you driving to a barbecue? Are you driving to the beach? Are you driving to go see a family member playing a sports game? Are you driving, like I do often, to my favorite ice cream spot? Shout out Steos. Possibilities are endless. All summer playlists must have a Beach Boys song. You're definitely gonna need some 60s classics. They're timeless, it's for everybody. I added a second 60s song here, why? Because summer's here and the time is right for dancing in the streets. Every self-respecting playlist is gonna need some Bruce Springsteen. Pat Beckett wouldn't, he wouldn't let me live it down if I didn't have any Springsteen on there. Next you're gonna need some island sounds, okay? Is it Jack Johnson? Is it Jimmy Buffett? Is it Bob Marley? I don't know. It's up to you. I'm not really a big Jimmy Buffett guy, so I went with Jack Johnson covering a Jimmy Buffett song. Next, classic 90s hip hop. Again, gets everybody, you want that summer energy, gets everybody moving. My personal choice, this is how we do it. The next three, you want to fill out your playlist with songs that give you, bring back good summer memories. So we're going track eight here. My favorite summer memory. August 5th, 2017, when I married my lovely wife. This is our wedding song. Track nine, Amos Lee, reminds me of hanging out in Mr. Chanowski's backyard. He was the first of our friends to buy a house, so therefore that's kind of where we spent all of our time. When I hear this song, I think about sitting on his patio hanging out. Track 10, Pete Yorn, Life on a Chain. The second best job I ever had to work at a Gloucester Catholic was working at Choo Choo Charlie's Ice Cream Parlor as a freshman and sophomore. Shout out Charlie Kane. But back then, the early 2000s, Y100 Love playing Life on a Chain. I heard it about seven times a shift. It always brings me back there. And then these next 10, you just want to fill out your playlist with songs that have a good summer vibe. There are some songs that sound appropriate for certain seasons. Like I wouldn't play Neil Young's Harvest Moon with the temperature above 50 degrees okay uh, so these are songs that are going to make you feel like summer again however you want to play i do want to point out the underdog by spoon strictly because as a reminder that the eagles won super bowl 52 with a final score of 41 to 33 okay i'm going to wrap it up langy doesn't like it when other people have more screen time than him but again, I think this is a good starter base for any good summer playlist. I hope you guys are all having fun and being safe, and uh, we'll see you back in September. You are right about that, Mr. Murphy. I like my screen time, so I'm back. But that was a great list. Uh, you know, for me, only thing missing, I could have used a little more Motown because of the family I'm a part of. That's what Saturdays in Stone Harbor were for me. But still, a tremendous, tremendous list. So now we go from a list with no drama to all drama. The club, that is. We're going to go to Miss Amy Pinardo, who heads up our drama club here at Gloucester Catholic and also teaches in our junior high, to give us her list of best plays turned into movies. This is one I personally am very excited for. So, Miss Pinardo, take it away. Hello, everyone. Miss P here with all things drama related at Gloucester Catholic. I hope you all are thriving. And today I'm bringing you my top five picks for show to movie adaptations. Before I start with my list, I'm going to put a disclaimer on. I didn't put Hamilton on this list. The reason why is you're watching the actual Broadway cast performing the Broadway show when you're watching it. Therefore, it's not a movie adaptation. You're getting the opportunity to see the real show. And same thing with Newsies. Great opportunity, great shows, but they're not movie adaptations. Now, on to my list. Number five, I have Phantom of the Opera. It is one of the longest running, largest grossing Broadway shows. When they brought it to screen, they picked actors and actresses that did the original cast justice. They kept all of the songs. They were true to the sets. They were true to the plot. Therefore, they did a fantastic job. Number four on my list is gonna be Rent. Rent was also a very large grossing Broadway show. They had a very limited number of performances though. So they decided to make a movie adaptation and some of the original cast from Broadway got to come reclaim their parts in the movie which is an incredible opportunity, which puts it up on my list. Number three, we have West Side Story. I'm sure that most of you have seen and or heard of it. Um, the original show was a Broadway classic. They did a very good job bringing it to the screen. 
the movie adaptation was very true to the plot. It had all of the original songs. But a fun fact about West Side Story is a lot of the actors and actresses in the movie were not allowed to do a lot of their own singing. They had voiceovers from Broadway stars, even though someone in the movie was a Tony Award winning actress. I always thought that that was very fascinating when I went back to watch the show. Number two, I'm going to put Mamma Mia, not just because we did it last year, but it is a great show and it was a great performance on our part. Um, but the original Mamma Mia toured for years. Um, it was a very successful show. I always loved the history behind the show. Um, it was touring and then unfortunately 9-11 happened in 2001 and they brought it to Broadway again to convince people to come back into the city and sing and dance and have a great time and remember the positives of humanity, um, which I always thought was amazing. And then they shared it to the movie world and the movie cast was also incredible and was able to make a sequel that was successful with more famous songs and they did a great job. And I think that they stuck very true to the original show. And finally, number one on my list, my all time favorite musical, The Sound of Music. And the movie adaptation of this was just incredible. The scenery, uh, the choice of actors and actresses. Julie Andrews is one of my favorite people. She is one of the most talented individuals in my opinion. And Chris Plummer also did a fantastic job being her equal in that movie, which is very impressive because she was such a star. So his acting and voice comparing to hers, incredible. Um, and I also think that the history behind The Sound of Music was very interesting. And that the Von Trapp children in the movie got to meet the real life Von Trapps. And there's just so much there. And it has been reworked so many times in so many beautiful ways. So um, big fan. And that is my top five list. Um, I hope that you all enjoyed it and check them out if you've never seen it. And if you are looking for something to watch new during your summer, try checking out a musical. You might like it. You might be surprised. There's lots of musicals all over all the streaming services now. So take some time, enjoy the arts and have a good summer. Hope to see you all soon. You seriously may not be able to beat that list. What a list, although I'm not going to lie to you. Hearing that the characters in West Side Story's movie were not singing is depressing. But still a great movie. Go check them out. And there is nothing wrong with musicals. They are great. There are some great ones out there. It's if you have Disney+, Plus, man, oh man, the musicals that are made for children, you're going to enjoy as well. All right, let's move on to a special anniversary. There has been something at Gloucester Catholic that is now going on to its 10th year. No, I'm not talking about myself and Mrs. Winnie Murphy, although we would like a little recognition from time to time, just saying. But what I am talking about is the Gloucester Catholic Junior High, which is now going to be open for 10 years. In the wake of the closing of the beloved St. Mary's Grammar School, Gloucester Catholic opened up a 7th and 8th grader to try and carry on the proud tradition in the city of Gloucester. For 10 years, students have been able to take advantage of small class sizes, passionate and intelligent teaching, and a rigorous schedule that sets them up for high school and beyond. If you don't want to take my word for it, here's four graduates from the first ever graduating class of the junior high to tell you about their experience. Hi, my name is Allison Laskowski, and I was a member of the first graduating class of the Gloucester Catholic Junior High in 2012. And by going to the Gloucester Catholic Junior High, it definitely helped shape me into the person I am today. Um, because going to the junior high was the first year, it was brand new, um, definitely was out of my comfort zone. But by going, I feel like it's definitely made me a more like adventurous and like confident person. I'm constantly trying new things. Um, and I ended up having a great experience at the junior high and going to high school there. Um, so I definitely recommend it to anyone who's considering it. You won't regret it. Hi, I'm Francesca Pollander. I'm one of the first graduating eighth graders of the GC junior high in 2012. I want to become a registered dietitian and I just graduated from Immaculata University and I start grad school in my dietetic internship with Marywood in the fall. 
And the way the junior high shaped me for all of this is developing a good work ethic and being very persistent in myself and knowing that I can do it considering St. Mary's closed in spring 2011 and the transitioning and everything. And it just, it just made me want everything for myself. Hi, I'm Brendan Buckland. I graduated uh, from the original class at Gloucester Catholic uh, Junior High. I attended the University of South Carolina and I'm currently working in Texas now with J.P. Morgan Chase. Um, one of my favorite memories is having Mrs. Kelly as my teacher. Uh, all of her classes were always a good time. And uh, I remember distinctly really enjoying having lockers for the first time. That was really cool. Thanks. Hi everyone, my name is Madison Walsh and I was a member of the first graduating class of the Gloucester Catholic Junior High in 2012. After graduating from the senior high in 2016, I then went to Newman University and obtained my degree in early childhood education and special education. I had the opportunities of a lifetime at Gloucester Catholic and I'm so excited to take those skills and values that were instilled in me and incorporate them into my teaching style and into my career that I begin this September as an educator. Thank you, you four. There's some of our brightest minds that have come through both the junior high and high school here at Gloucester Catholic. I'll be remiss to say one of the best things about the junior high is Mrs. Mary Kelly, who has dedicated her life to educating the youth and has done a tremendous job in running the junior high. So if you're interested in applying to the junior high, we are still enrolling students in the grades of seven and eight for the 2020-2021 school year. For more information, please email Tom Flynn at tflynn at gchsrams.org or apply online at gchsrams.wixsite.com slash mygcrams. All right, time to move on to our final two lists. And for this next list, we've gone up the administrative ladder. We are reaching out to a man who has been here before. He has done some things on here for us. He's done a great job. And he's also our Vice Principal of Student Affairs. That is Mr. Tom Likavone, live from Stone Harbor, to tell us how do we handle our kids during the summer. So Mr. Likavone, take it away. Hi, Gloucester Catholic, Mr. Likavone here. Uh, Mr. Lange asked me to put together my top five things to do with your kids during the summer. So I have my buddy Thomas here to help me out. Say hi, Thomas. All right, so in the Eichvone house, number five would be putting together safaris with all of our stuffed animals, mm -hmm. right, dude? What's your favorite safari room to make? My favorite, the jungle. The jungle, and all right. my bedroom's the jungle. And his bedroom's the jungle, all right? Uh, number four is we like to paint what? Shoes. Seashells. So we get seashells from the beach, then we bring them home, we paint them and color on them, all kinds of fun stuff, right, dude? Mm -hmm. All right, number three is we like to play with different water games outside. Can you name some of the water games that we play? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, water slide, uh, the uh, orange pool, a water table, and the giant flamingo, and the springboard. All right, so they have a whole lot of stuff, and yes, we do have a giant flamingo. Uh, number two is we really like to do a lot of puzzles. What's your favorite puzzle? You know, animal puzzles. Animal puzzles, cool. And number one, the number one thing to do with your kids during the summer, especially when you can't go anywhere, give them the iPad, right, dude? <laughs> or what? Or daddy's phone. Or That's daddy's right. Phone. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, the Welsh Catholic can't wait to see you in September. I miss uh, writing all these pink slips up, you know, putting kids in timeout just doesn't give me the same thrill. Uh, so I can't wait to see you, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Go Rams. Say bye. Bye. Safaris, flamingos, tablets, seashells. Oh, sorry. We all need to take some notes on that one if you have little kids, because finding stuff to do amidst the pandemic and the summer can be a challenge. But with that said, thank you, Mr. Rigovone, on a tremendous list. And Thomas, way to teach your father a lesson there, buddy. Good job. All right, so for our final list, we've gone to our own Gloucester Catholic students. Obviously, last year was cut short in March, and we went virtual through June. But September is coming, and these kids are eager to get back into the building. Here's something they are missing about Gloucester Catholic. See if you can catch on to the theme here. Hey, GC. I miss seeing everyone in school each day and I can't wait to be back to school in September. 
I'm Jason Ruggieri, and something that I look forward to this upcoming school year is being with my friends. Hi, I'm Emily Cloak, and what I'm most excited for is to hopefully be back with my friends for my senior year. What's up, guys? It's Ian the Grown, and I'm most excited to go back to school to make memories with my friends and to see all the GC family again. Hi, my name is Emma Chambers, and I am excited to get back to GC so I can finally see my classmates again. I'm Lauren Westman, and I can't wait to start my senior year at GC. I'm really excited to cheer on the football team with my fellow cheerleaders and also play volleyball. Go Rams! Hmm, seems that GC family idea is really popping its head up again, huh? Well, thank you to all of you, and we cannot wait to see you in September. Before we end the show, we want to let you know if you're interested in applying to Gloucester Catholic for this school year, we are still accepting applications. So once again, please email Tom Flynn for more information at tflynn at gchsrams.org or go check out the website that's on your screen right now for more information and to apply online. Come be a member of the next GC family. So to end the show, speaking of that, we want you to get to know some of the names of our newest members. So during our final segment, you will see names scrolling of those that will be entering the GC family this school year. During that, you will also see the wonderful musical talents once again of rising junior Kevin Beckett as he plays us a summer song and we're going to get a nice little cameo from one of our favorites at Gloucester Catholic. I thank you for tuning in. Please join us throughout the school year as we continue these episodes and students, we cannot wait to see you in September. Enjoy the rest of summer. Try to amend my carnivorous habit. Made it nearly 70 days. Losing weight without speeding sunflower seeds. Drinking lots of carrot juice and soaking up rays But at night I'd have these wonderful dreams Some kind of sensuous treat Not zucchini, fettuccine, a burger But a big warm bun and a huge chunk of meat Cheeseburger in paradise Heaven on earth with Onion slice, not too particular, not too precise. I'm just a cheeseburger in paradise. Heard about the old time serum man, they eat the same thing again and again. One beer and bread, they said, could raise the dead. Well, it reminds me of a menu at a holiday inn. Times have changed in sellers these days. When I'm in port, I get what I need. Not just two vanas or bananas or daiquiris, but that American creation on which I feed. Cheeseburger in Paris. Medium real with us to be nice Hell it on out with an onion slice I'm just a cheeseburger in paradise I like Cheeseburger in paradise I'm just a cheeseburger in